So blank material, everybody's favorite way to apply materials, has received a few supplemental updates courtesy of Bongiorno 7. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So we'll take this object here and look at it in front view. And if you select some shapes here and go under the Q menu under material, you'll notice that you now have an option here called blank material where you can now add a blank material. However, at this time, whenever you don't have a material present, it'll just put a material on the object. But if we go back into it and we add a blank material, you can see that now we've added a unique material to just this area. And we can select these two areas and also do the same thing. Just press Q, add a blank material. And we can select the trim here as well and just add a blank material. And if we look at this in render mode, Control alt space bar to come out of full screen maximum full screen maximum mode and we can see the results of What we're looking at here, so we're already getting somewhere So the other thing is that if we go back into edit mode, we also have Material scroll so if we press Q We can go to material scroll and actually scroll through the materials and it'll turn off render visibility for everything So you can see exactly what material you're putting on your selection then when you click you're back in edit mode exactly where you left off. So we'll select this, add a blank material, but we'll make it glass. Notice that once it's glass, you can see it in edit mode. However, we didn't want to make this object glass. So we'll go in here, add a blank material, maybe even material scroll to just scroll and find just a perfect material to prevent that from being presented as glass. And we'll select this piece here, Q, add blank material, except we'll choose a principal material and just see what we got here. And that is the new blank material as of hardops982 underscore 10. So there you are, you're cutting, you're just doing things. And then next thing you know, you need to move your object. So we'll just put a couple of cuts in here, just utilizing quick uh, execute along with laser cut here. And you can see that when I move the object, I'm not able to take the booleans with it. Now, if you go under operations and you activate late parent, you can. And so we can actually rotate this sideways, work on it like so, cut through this, just do what we need to do using box cutter if needed. Of course, box cutter has an option to parent the shape, but in the event that you've been working and you didn't remember to parent your shapes, you can just go under operations, late parent, and it's got your back. So now it works exactly as it intended. And I do plan on having it integrated at some point in box cutter as well, but I just wanted to show that late parent is now there for you if you're utilizing the latest update. Two boxes also received some improvements and to show those in action, we'll just take this cube, press X and delete it. Shift A will bring in a plane and I'll use the mirror tool, but I'll shift click bisect to turn it yellow which means that when I bisect it, I actually cut it in half instead. And so we'll just add a screw on here. And here we are with our quick little solenoid. We'll just delete that edge. And here we go, we're ready to rock. So if I were to put a cube right here and do a slash, we can just quickly just do a slash in our little solenoid here. But now I can press QOT, and you can notice that now box is actually accurate to the shape that was being used with it. So I could also use it with this QOT and just quickly create a box that I can use in here to just quickly create a shape that I need in the right area that I need a QOT. And it's just something I just can't stop doing. So I hope that everyone is enjoying it. Of course, if you love uh, two box, you'll also love uh, under operations, there's two plane which will bring up a plane. I do hope in the future to turn it into a modal where users will be able to choose from what axis you create your plane and also to get the origin exactly on the plane. So this one is of course just a little preliminary idea on where I plan to go with the idea, but it's definitely there in case you need it just like here. In the event you want to get in there and just quickly turn an area into a plane, QOT, 
just for quickly turning an area into a box and I just can't get enough of it. So the QT gang has definitely been rubbing off on me and my usage of using QLT is definitely a sign of that. So when it comes to solid geometry, if you take a cube, for example, and tab into edit mode, and you look at the mark option that's at the top of the Q menu in edit mode, control clicking it will add a bevel, like so. And if you press one, it'll actually make the bevel go inward. And this is something that's been in the last couple of releases for bevel if you're using it in edit mode for beveling just individual areas. You can do the same thing here. Just press one, set it to 0.5, press one, invert it to 0.05 in case you're going for something like this. Just a quick way to get that. However, if we bring in a plane and we were to control click this in edit mode, you can see that it now has support for vert. However, if you press two, it'll actually go into just a default 0.5, but if you press it again, it'll actually go into a ulterior 0.5 that's actually simpler and you can use this to create a wide variety of shapes however it's something that we use every now and then for just getting experimental however if you're the type of user that needs it just know that it is there for you of course for something like this i'll need to adjust the auto smooth a little bit and then control click bevel to put one on top of it and begin sharpening it and of course i can begin truly getting to work on this making it into something more interesting uh, another thing that I like to do is shift D duplicate and under operations shift click apply in order to create a duplicate mesh I mean in order to create a uh, applied um, duplicate of the previous one and then you know take that geometry and set it and you know hit it with a solidify and we could shift select both of these hit it with a difference and we're already getting somewhere with this mesh of course I can just alt W jump into box cutter and begin making short work of this mesh and begin turning it into something a lot more interesting. Of course right here it, I was worried it actually wasn't going to track right because of the face that I started on but it looks like box cutter is even better than I thought it was and this isn't even an ad for box cutter I'm supposed to be talking about hard ops here but I just wanted to go through and just talk about a couple of features and how they actually connect with hard ops and box cutter. So right here, we'll just mirror it across, getting this sort of shape. And we could just, you know, go here. And, you know, even if we wanted to just call this short, we can just bring up this box, Alt W, switch over to hops tool, use hops dots, and just choose cut, duplicate this over, use cut, bring it over here, cut. I was worried that I was actually cutting the wrong side, but it looks like both sides are able to be played with. So anyways, you get the idea here. I could be cutting this all day. In fact, we'll mirror this over to the other side and we're already on our way.